Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television. But here are some of the pictures that you sent to our eyewitness portal. Uh, let's begin with this picture from Creek Road in Apapa area of Lagos State showing the filthy state of that particular road. Our eyewitness reporter says that the road is in this condition due to negligence on the part of the concerned authorities. He's calling on them to try to fix it. Next is this image showing the traffic gridlock along Yaba, a Lago Meiji area of Lagos State. According to our eyewitness reporter, it is caused by heavy truck offloading goods and obstructing movement. He says this has been going on for quite some months now and he wants it checked. And still in Lagos is this photo of a bad road in Owode bus stop along Lagos Sabekuta Expressway. According to our eyewitness reporter, the bad spot stretches all the way to Iyano Ilobo. He wants the state government to intervene. Our final picture is from Wari Refinery in Delta State showing an air polluted area. Our eyewitness reporter says this is not uh, healthy for the residents and he's asking the government to do something about it quickly. We do sincerely thank you for sending in those pictures as we ask that you keep them coming. Youth development and welfare for women were the major campaign promises of Governor Willie Obiano when his train hit Orumba North and South local government areas. He says that the youths will gain employment in the various agricultural and entrepreneurial programs the state has initiated, while women of uh, child-bearing age will be properly attended to on issues of child and maternal health. There were also something for the elderly, as the senior citizens will also benefit from the Anambra State Health Insurance Scheme. It's less than three weeks to the Anambra governorship election, and the state governor, Willie Obiano, isn't leaving anything to chance as he takes his campaign to Urumba North and South local government areas of the state. Party faithful use the opportunity to speak on why Governor Obiano deserves another chance. is a hard to reach area of Orumba North. It is a major challenge to anybody. It's only a golden door palette. Everyone has to know. Today, that road has been awarded and the work is ongoing. I want to assure you that we are going to mobilize our people. Orumba North people will come out in mass and vote for you massively. And I'm assuring you that we are going to protect our vote. Nobody, no group, no set can rig the forthcoming authorship election in Anambra State. And just like he's done at previous campaign grounds, the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Professor Charles Soludo, throws his weight behind Obiano's candidacy. OAU, the three local governments, have been the most consistent in supporting Africa. Africa has never lost in these three local governments in any gubernatorial election. For Governor Willie Obiano, all he's asking for is another chance to consolidate on his achievements in the last four years. Please register with the local government because we are profiling all the youths to find out what we can do for them. We are going to organize you to cooperatives for those that want to do agriculture and give you seed money after we've trained you. It was also an opportunity for ABGA to receive the campaign members from other political parties. How do we abandon a government who is enriching the rural masses? Who is going to do it for us? We have to do best what we know that is police, best police. for you. And you are the best for you. While the governor and other party executives received Mr. Nwakwa and over 2,000 followers into the ABGA fold, a former governor of the state, Dr. Chukwemeka Izife, brings the rally to a close with a charge to party members to work tirelessly to ensure victory for the party come November the 18th. And still on electoral matters, although the local government elections in Enugu has been largely adjudged by citizens and civil society organizations as free and fair, 
Reactions continue to trail the late arrival of voting materials in some of the local councils, both within and outside the city centre. The elections, which was to start by 8 a.m. across the 17 local government areas of the state, kicked off some hours later in some of the polling centres, but uh, uh, the Inugun State Independent Electoral Commission was uh, in hand to extend the voting time by one hour to accommodate every eligible voter. Restriction of movement and business activities are always synonymous with election days, and Enugu is no exception, as the people elect their local representatives into the 17 local government areas of the state. From one polling unit to the other, party agents, independent observers, and security officials were on hand to monitor the process. The state governor, Ifai Yugwai, was also spotted casting his vote at his ward. Some voters and observers, including chairman of the civil society organization, Comrade Friday Maduka, and president of the National Association of Nigerian Students, described the process as free and fair. The state government provided the necessary logistic support to us to ensure a transparent, quiet, free, fair, and credible local government election in the state without any form of interference in the operations of the election in the body. For party agents, especially the PDP and APC, at the Code 4 Ward, New Haven Primary School, it was accusations and counter-accusations. Some of the polling agents of uh, APC agents, they are not even happy. Some are complaining and saying that uh, PDP people are trying to manipulate, PDP people are trying to manipulate. Everything is, is going well. It's only that the opposition party, the APC man, who came here with some people, that we don't know, start making noise, harassing the ESSEC people, that they will not conduct election. But finally, everything is going well. Due to the late arrival of voting materials, the chairman of the State Independent Electoral Commission, Dr. Mike Ajogu, extended the voting time to 5 p.m., an hour more, to ensure everyone is allowed to exercise their franchise. Party faithful are in high spirits to have the victory tilt towards their candidate, but they still have to wait a little longer until the State Electoral Commission announces the results of the election. And away from our electoral matters, in view of the common challenge confronting African nations, media practitioners on the continent and other stakeholders are seeking greater synergy among African journalists to enhance accountability and transparency in governance. This would form the focal point of a learning visit by the Ethiopian journalists to Nigerian media houses as part of a capacity development program being anchored by the Channels Academy in collaboration with the U.S. Embassy. The week-long program enabled journalists from both countries to share experiences with a view to forging ties for continental development. Our correspondent, Ajurian Galali, reports. From the Horn of Africa, these Ethiopian journalists arrive west to learn best practice. We should follow a discussion group among ourselves. After engaging with senior editors of Nigeria's top online radio and print media at the Channels Academy, the visitors are given full access to Channels Television's award-winning production process. Acknowledging the extensive freedom of Nigeria's press after returning from tours, participants share their view of the exercise. We have a lot of room, by the way, in Africa for changes. But the situations that we're both in determine how we approach those changes. Uh, like I said, we still need to learn on how to operate, how you did it. Uh, how, how you got to this position? And the other one is training. So uh, we don't need to go um, to the other continents. I think we can do it here. If uh, sharing the training the facilities would be also one of the uh, things that we should think about. U.S. spokesman Russell Brooks details the rationale behind the program uniting African journalists. We'll do all that we can to mitigate, deter, defeat terrorism. 
we want to promote trade, investment, and economic development. But we also are committed, as we should be, to promoting democracy and good governance. In a busy week at the Channels Academy, the visitor's log would not be limited to the Ethiopian delegation. As British military officials brought Nigerian military trainees to the facility as part of efforts to enhance military effectiveness in partnering with the Nigerian media to enhance national security. We selected our journalists from every agency and we worked on a, uh, an element of trust. Uh, you stayed on that list if you continued to get the trust. And the way they earned trust was they were shown everything. They had medium minders, uh, which were Air Force trained, these guys, uh, for our Air Force, that would go with them to assist, to open doors, to make sure they could talk to anyone, they could see everything. And it was their ability as a journalist to, to f not filter, but to select. It wasn't a military story, it was the balance story. The integrity, quality and freedom of media practice is now a global concern with wide-ranging consequences for all humanity. And this understanding has attracted foreign and domestic stakeholders to obtain best practices in an industry that is shaping the world. Ajuri Engilali, Channels Television News. Both the academic and non-academic staff unions of all the six state-owned colleges of education in Oyo State have embarked on an indefinite strike. The chairman of the Joint Action Committee for the Colleges of Education in the state, Comrade Afiz Adini, told journalists that the unions will not resume till their demands are met. The workers who took to the streets in their various locations in the state are asking the state government to pay all outstanding arrears of salaries owed them. The Commission of Education, Professor Adini, Oluo Fela attributed the situation to the reduction in subvention to the schools, adding that steps are being taken to find a lasting solution to the issues at stake. We use 14 days of the to your state government to pay all the areas and to restore 100% salary payments. This ultimatum ends yesterday. The strike has been declared in all the tertiary institutions in all your state. We are not looking at these issues from a microscopic perspective. But we are looking at the entire problem holistically and solve the problem permanently. So by next week, by the grace of God, we are going to constitute governing councils for all the tertiary institutions. That is one of the fallouts from, uh, from this meeting. So subsequently, the issue of uh, funds will be resolved. But like I said, subvention is support. And government has not reneged in granting subvention to all the tertiary institutions in the state. When the news at 10 returns, economic research firm FSDH expects further decline in Nigeria's current inflation rate ahead of the official data from the National Bureau of Statistics. That's some business news. Join us again.